kick me in the ass, but I'm telling the truth. That, Kids today wouldn't know what that is. You were looking at the mob guys as your friends. Where's Catania? You want to get a slice? I come from a boxing background. You're not gonna screw around with Rich Man Cuso. My doctor don't want, don't want to see that. Like we came in, we struggled, we struggled. That's what's missing. If you didn't get home at 5.30, you didn't eat. Sicilian, Calabria, and Naples. Same with me. Crazy combo. Seriously. Antonio's not changed a thing since the 50s, huh? That's why I got so huge, eating this stuff all my life. If you said Afanabla, that's a curse. And you better run. Go back to Florida, <laughs> will you? We don't give up. We fight for our values. We believe in our culture. Good afternoon, guys. The best stories are usually told through locals that have history and experience. So today, we're gonna meet up with an old school Italian American, Rich Mancuso, who's gonna bring us into his nostalgic lens of New York City. We're gonna go through his history here, what he's seen, but also get his take on what things are currently like here in 2021. Yeah, you too. Good luck with everything. Oh man, the best, you know, I mean, really good Italian, regular Italian food, but like the, the bread bakeries, you, yeah. you can't find better bread anywhere. All right. So have fun. Thank you. Rich, how you doing? We shaking, we doing this, what do you uh, want? I don't know, I don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> Let me show you this first. Come here. All right, we're in. Rich, say hi. Take this mask off first. Yeah, okay. I don't have to wear it outside. I just have to wear it when we go somewhere indoors. Yeah. So this was all Italian back in the oh, yeah. day? Yeah, basically. In fact, I'm going to show you now the Bronx Tale. Okay. Yeah, everyone knows the movie. Here's the mural. What's the movie? The Bronx Tale. God, I haven't seen it. Oh, wow. Do I need to go home now? You need, watch you it, know, come back? You, you need to see it because everyone has seen it. Jeez. Based on this neighborhood back in the 60s when... It, there was the racial uh, division. And okay. They didn't want any blacks or Latinos in the neighborhood. And it, in the Bronx Tale is based on that a lot, and about the mob guys that try to keep the neighborhood safe. Here's a mural of it right here. In the All right. You might want to see that. They just put this up a few years ago. You know, when you think of uh, Italians in New York, you think of, I mean, the it's tourists think of Little Italy, but this was it, right? This was known as Little Italy. It still is. Little Italy, the Bronx. We're very far from Manhattan. Yeah, Mulberry Street's Little Italy of New York, but this is Little Italy of the Bronx. At one time, this community was designated by the FBI as the safest neighborhood in New York City. How's it now? No. Okay. Unfortunate, and and I'm not. I'm not going to fault anyone. Yeah. But to tell you that when I grew up here, on these streets. Here yeah. and what we're gonna see. Right. The mob influence, the mob guy. Really? Kept it safe. So it was the mob keeping it safe, not the cops. Yeah, because right the cops were you know, the part of it. They worked with them, they worked with the community. We had a beat cop. Ah. You don't have that no more. We had one cop or two that knew the whole neighborhood, walked around with the Billy Club. And when you saw that cop, you ran away because you didn't know. <laughs> Let's just say you have a business. Every one of these shops was paying to the Italian mob? Uh, no. Okay. And then worked that way. How'd it work? See, that's a misconception. They did not control businesses and people. Okay. They were very kind hearted people that helped the community. Not like what you saw in The Sopranos with Tony Soprano and them making sure that they controlled the businesses, took the rent or whatever. No, that's not what it was like here. 
That's a misconception. What, what, what they did was protect the community. They helped people. They made sure these streets were safe. And as a result, when they were put away and the cops couldn't control, uh, and then the landlords took over all these buildings when Section 8 in this neighborhood changed. So how were they making their money then? They did things that weren't legal. We know that. Okay, so were they selling drugs or? Not that when wasn't I, a big when thing I was then, around huh? them, not me. I didn't see that. Okay. All of that might be going on. I never saw it. Okay. There was the illegal racket game of numbers, okay. gambling, which now is not an issue at all because it's all legal now. Right. This was the main street, 187th. Okay. And you'll still see the Italian presence with the pastry shops. Oh yeah, that old school pastry but place. in are places that weren't here when I grew up. Uh, there's a little over there, Artuso, which was the most popular one down the right, block. And we'll go see Jerome if he's in Gino's Pastry. We'll take a walk there. Okay, we're, get, we're gonna go to a pastry shop. Yeah. We're gonna get some Italian yeah. food? Is that a possibility? Yeah, well, I was gonna do that at Catania's. I wanna okay. go down and get... Sicilian, huh? Sicilian and, and a mini calzone. Okay guys, the sponsor of today's video is Cuts Clothing. I like making videos, but I hate shopping. Luckily, I found the best t-shirt of my life that works for everything. From walking the streets in the Bronx with Rich Mancuso to sweltering heat at the Texas border to going out with my wife for dinner, this shirt does it all. The older I get, the more I realize that quality is important. Cuts makes products that last. No stretching, worn out collar, ironing or pilling. I've used and abused these shirts and they are indestructible and fantastic for traveling. Yes, they cost more than your average t-shirt, but you get what you pay for with cuts. They also have stylish hoodies and long sleeve shirts. If you want one of the most durable slash stylish t-shirts I've come across after years of searching, Here's the best one I found at a discount. To receive 15% off your order, click on the Cuts link below in the description or use the promo code PETER at checkout. Again, that's PETER at checkout. I wouldn't recommend something to you that I didn't fully believe in or use myself. If you want the best t-shirt of your life, give Cuts a try. People come from all over the country, all over the world to eat here. Down here. At some of the popular eateries here, restaurants, and even beyond on another block. All right. And we're gonna go down there too. I'm gonna show you where my old social club was. That isn't okay. anymore. That, sometimes people don't like the way I talk about it, and they say that I'm anti this No, it's not that. I'm telling the truth. Right. I am. I didn't grow up. My mother and father taught me and my two brothers never ever to be prejudiced and to hate. Okay. To get along with everyone, and that's what I've done all my life. I still do. I grow. I grew up with Latinos and Blacks all my life. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I'm involved with sports all my life, but never had any hate or never biased towards some group over another. Yes, I'm, I'm an Italian and I'm very, very proud of my heritage. Yeah. As an Italian American and I always will be. Yeah. And I also feel coming out of this neighborhood that Italians don't get the credit they rightfully deserve. How, for contributing how, how so, so much to society in every walk on facet of life. Yeah. From the arts to culture to to the food to inventions. I mean, Enrico Fermi, this one, that one, even Christopher Columbus. Yeah. And now we got Christopher Columbus that's under attack. This is what I love about your generation that we're starting to lose a bit. Yeah. I'm not young either, but this authenticity, you know, this yeah. this love for craft and like mom and pop type shop. You don't it's have sort of that going today. away. The young people sort of going today. Away. It's the young people today in the Bronx, in the city, and this is everywhere but here, if they would not know what we did and what we went through, times weren't easy. What do you mean by that? Well, we... we You're we, saying it's not as good now, right? You're saying like it's going It downhill? wasn't great back then either. Okay. But the one thing that was great is we had a stable household, a mother, a father. Today that don't exist. I mean, I've worked for well, it kids. does for half the people, right? I've worked with kids all my life, and I see it more and more. A lot of these young people don't know who their mom, real mom is, or no alone, more so who their real dad is. Yeah. We always had that structure. My house and most of in this community knew who the mom and dad was, who the brother and sister was, and, and that, that contributed a lot to making this neighborhood strong. Because if there was a problem, 
if a merchant knew you did something wrong, they knew your mom or dad. Okay. If a cop knew you, the beat cop knew something wrong, they knew your mom or dad. And that wasn't fun to deal with mom and dad. No, no. It wasn't. I, I, Not at my house. <laughs> I have an Italian American father. I had, and it was he was he was hard. It was at tough my old house, if you did wrong, let him rest in peace. Dad died too young. Okay. You got the strap. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. And if you saw that belt come out, you ran for cover. <laughs> if you look above that blue yawning. Uh huh. Well, that's where the restaurant was, and that apartment window right there with the air conditioner is where Joe Pesci lived. Before he was famous? Yeah. So yeah. a lot of our big uh, Italian-American stars grew out of this neighborhood. Yes, some of them are uh, Chaz Palmateri, Joe Pesci, spent a great time of his youth here. Sicilian, Calabria, and Naples. Same with me. <laughs> seriously. It's a crazy combo. Seriously, seriously, yeah. So that's classified Italian American. Yeah, yeah. You don't call yourself Italian, though you are, but you're an American. You're born here, an Italian American. How many generations do you think that can go back? Because I'm, tech, you know, my DNA comes from that part of the world. Um, but I, I, you know, I can't claim I'm Italian. But I, do, I tell you, Italian food does bring about warmth. We always had pastas every Sunday, oh, geez, like Sunday. made in my grandmother's pot. <laughs> You know? Sunday dinner, just like they did in Italy, three o'clock, it was on the table. Yeah. It was a, face, a festival in my house. It was big, yeah. Did yours always <laughs> end in argument and conflict? All the time. <laughs> okay. Ours did too. Uh, and it wasn't just Sundays, it was holidays. Right. Uh, that's just a part of how we are. <laughs> what is that? Highly emotional, right? There's an expression coming out of Naples in a tank called, you go, know, Afanabla. If you said Afanabla, that's a curse. And you better run. But here's Arthur Avenue, okay. which hasn't changed. Except for a few, like the hair salon. A few stores. Stick ball, sponge ball, kick ball, uh, Johnny on a pony. Yeah. We, we met a, a, a ping pong against the wall with a sponge, with a, with a Spalding ball, spades they called it. Yeah. Uh, Scully in the street with the caps, we used to take- I don't know what that is. Well, what we did is we used to go to the cars and we used to we used to steal and take their tire caps <laughs> and put that on a bottle cam opener and put that there to give it friction in the street. And you had to just use your finger go like that and try and get it into a, a hole, like circle. Okay. <laughs> and we all did it. That was our fun. How'd These that, kids today wouldn't know what that is. How'd that go over though with people? Did you no. get the beat down if you're caught? No, that was yeah. they helped. They played with us. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so you were looking at the mob guys as as uh, your friends. They made me look at things that others wouldn't see. You know, well, well, life. Okay. They tell you a story. Yeah. They would. So you wouldn't have that. You hear that? We didn't have that. What Mexican music? All of that. Loud music, whatever it is. So you you didn't have Italian music. No, not like that. Thing? Not yeah. like that. Well, the, sis, the car systems weren't that good back then. Well, we did still. We wouldn't do it. It's called respect. Uh, you're looking at that as, as disrespectful. Very. Why? Because it's, it's because it, it's it, because it's it, it, it's it's noisy, and people don't want to be around that. You know, why must you drive around in a car and make all that noise when there's other people around that don't... It's totally unnecessary. What are you trying to prove by doing that? Kick me in the ass, but I'm telling the truth. <laughs> I'm trying it. It tastes great. All right. <laughs> I don't have the ring on my finger. You punched him? Oh, yeah. I, kn I knocked him out. I come from a boxing background, so... <laughs> you're not going to screw around with Rich Mancuso, but... I stay away from it, but if you're going to attack me, I'm going to, uh... I'm gonna make my point. You're gonna stand your ground. Sure. All right. Yeah, don't hey, don't mess know. with Rich. Well, well I, I, I'm getting older, so I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mom and dad love that place. They would, yeah. No, no, it's owned by a Jewish guy. Okay. <laughs> An Italian figured that out. Hey, but I got a joke for you. If uh, a Jew and an Italian go to go into business, who loses money? Italian always wins. I think this through. A Jew and Italian go to business together. Who loses money? Who loses money? Yeah. The Italian doesn't lose the money. The government. 
Oh, well, all right. Go back to Florida, will you? <laughs> Look, that then became a Umberto's Clam House, the one they have on Lydia Mulberry Street. Yeah. And they, since it's not no more. This used to be the movie theater in the neighborhood known as Chinelli's, which was other known as The Dumps. We used to come here on Saturdays for the matinee, the kitty matinee, watch a cartoon and a movie yeah. right here. But it was called The Dumps because it was filthy. Okay. I mean, you know, I got the names of the Dumps because he would see a rat once in a while underneath the seats and scare the hell out of everyone. In the theater while watching. Right in okay. here, it used to be movie theater. Chinelli's, and, and uh, there was one maitre d who would be the babysitter for all of us on a Saturday. She she dreaded that job, but she did it. She became the mother hen to all of us, though. Okay, so all the mom used to throw a quarter from the window, and that was your afternoon in here. It was like a babysitter. Yeah. She'd send all, all the kids would a come here. A quarter from the window, she'd throw it down to go as part of your allowance that you got on a Saturday. Okay. Tell a kid today what an allowance is. They wouldn't know that. 25 cents, 50 cents would get you a whole day in here. Your movies, your soda, your popcorn, your hot dog, whatever you needed. Let's go around and here. And now it's a, it's a beautiful library. Broadcasters, writers, Antonio's. There's a day off. All right, he, Antonio's not changed a thing since the 50s, huh? Uh, Look, he's, he's hiring. Ponte de Casa. You want this bread? Yeah, let's let's try some. They were open, I think. No, like they, that wall they, is not they changed. They have another shop right there on Hunter Avenue. So this mm -hmm. is the secondary store, which is just you know get the same this thing. This is the original. This is the original. The original shop. Look at the floor. I do. I do. Uh, the old ceiling. Yeah. I know Uncle Bobby has me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I heard. I. Yeah. No. They're really good. And I know. I grew up with them. Freshly made every day, fine or not. That's why I got so huge, eating this stuff all my life. <laughs> Be back in a moment. Bye-bye. Right. The market that you can't beat. Good. Oh, wow. Fantastic. This was here when you were growing up, Rich? Yeah, I probably was here. So was I. I grew up in the middle, but I'm here 43, 44 years this year. How we doing? Well, All fresh. How you guys doing? It's okay if I video this? All right. No charge. All right. You got all the sausages here. Yeah, all the get fresh. How you doing? Fresh all the sausages. Nine types of sausages. I've known him since he was a kid. You're right. I've been yeah. here since I was 13. Wow. What do you? I've been here 52 years, man. What have you seen in the neighborhood? I'm sure you could talk for hours on that, but what are the big things, changes you've seen? Well, a lot of different people, different ethnic groups. So there used to be, you know, strictly mainly old Italian, you know, descent immigrants, you know. Now we got a lot of uh, big influx of Mexicans and Albanians, good workers, good people. Yeah. 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 Uh, still the Italians, they used to come here, you know, years ago with their, you know, with their mothers. Right. And uh, now they're coming back to basics. Because, you know, outside this neighborhood, everything is like uh, supermarkets. It. You're not going to find nothing like this anywhere else in the world. This, I live up is, in Rockland. All you see is Cosmos and BJ's. This is like an endangered you know? species. Oh, it is. It is. I mean, there's not that many left of us left. You know, I mean, it's really hard to find a butcher that knows how to. So why aren't the Italians up. having the Italian Americans having kids? What's going on? Why they're, they're having kids? Why they're not having kids? Well, they're, well it's too expensive to have kids. That's what it is. I'm the They have one, two. Life has changed. Is right. Kids I'm demand too much today. Right. It's not like years ago. You know, gonna, nobody wants to work. No one, no one, no one. Nobody wants not to do happening. this. Nobody wants to do this type of work. You gotta work all kinds of hours. You get you know, up early. You, you gotta get up early. Yeah, I get up at four thirty. I gotta be at six o'clock. You know, set up the case. But nobody wants to do this type of work. You know, everybody now it's all the, the, all the technological savvy now. You know, they don't want to get their hands dirty, work 12, 14 hours a day. It's impossible if you find somebody that wants to work. If you don't have hair, you can't work here. You can't hire me. <laughs> yeah, I was born there, so I came here when I was 13. You were born in Italy? Italy? Yes. Where? Yeah, Puglia. Puglia, the Adriatic side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The heel of Italy, yeah. You ever go back I was there? 13. Oh, yeah. I've been back about five times. Yeah. So what do, you think, what do you there. think when you go back to Italy and you come back to the States? What do you well, think Well, you know, I would love to, you know, I love, I love Italy. No question about it. I love the, the lifestyle. But well, once you're used to this, after 50 years, you know what I mean? It's yeah. very it's very hard to go back to that type of lifestyle. I mean, it's so much calmer. You know, yeah. they, they really, they enjoy life. Let's put it this way. But 
you know, I don't want to say they have no goals in life. We came here, we struggled, we struggled. We always worked, yeah, always yeah. on the rush, rush, yeah, rush, yeah, you know. Yeah. You want a bigger house, you want a car, you want to give an education to your kids. Over there, it's just more somber, more like calm. Well, there's right. no pulse, exactly. There's no pulse. You know, that's what I told my wife. Yeah, it's nice to visit, yeah. you know, month, two weeks, two weeks, but yeah. to live there after you used to 50 years here, can't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta come back there, you know. Yeah. So. so you're saying down the road, when, uh, when yeah. your generation, yeah, yeah. Not for a long time, but I'm just saying, yeah. there's no one coming in to fill the place. No, no, it's it's all going to be yeah. prepackaged stuff. You know what I mean? It's gonna be on YouTube. We'll, you all right with that? We'll make. I'll put you guys a link in we'll there. We'll make our own uh, meatballs. On the television, eh? <laughs> Uh, you come here a lot? Yeah. Come not a lot, but also. This is the place, huh? Yeah, this is yeah. the place. Thank you. We're right. talking to you, Appreciate buddy. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Next pumpkin. Look at the prices on them. <laughs> oh, they smell so good. What, what do you think of the music, Rich? Uh, one of the things I that can't stand. And I play it at City Field, where I, where I am a lot with the Mets, covering the Mets. That song? No. Lazy Mary. You can't stand it? I can't stand it, because it's an insult to Italians. This is Mario's. Original restaurant here. Why? Because it says lazy? Well, lazy Mary. It insults Italians. It's the Italian woman and the female. And, uh, they're close. It's a Monday. A lot of clothes on Monday. There's Pasquale's Rigoletto. Let's go, uh, let's go get a meal. Uh, go a... Yeah, we'll stop in Catania after we look at the Columbus bus. See the neighborhood completely downhill when you go past here. What happens past here? Oh, well, you've got uh, activity that's not Drugs. good. It's not Drugs safe. Right it's actually open today. This was a move. This used to be by the old Columbus Boys Club. They moved it here to this park. And it's a subject of controversy because Columbus Day, that it's guarded because there have been all types of threats that knock it down. How do you feel about that? Uh, dead against it. What did this guy, this is Italian tradition. Leave it alone. Leave okay. it alone. He's an Italian, he's a part of our culture. Leave it alone. So you feel like your culture, it's like chipping away well, your get culture a, if get this happens? Tax. Okay. Get attacked too much, and to go back to the days when the mob guys were around, if they tried to do that, it would just be a threat, and go fur any further than a threat, that would be stopped. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. You know, this, this, is, this is that's culture. Well built too. Leave it alone. Any of those statues in the city. It, it annoys me, Peter. Yeah. This is Crescent Avenue. This is another street. Has some good restaurants on the corner down further, Antonio's. And my old social club, which is no more, was in the middle of that block right there. Social club. We what hung we out. There? We had a club, us young guys, 24-7. That was our hangout. There's a lot of beer drinking, a lot of parties, a lot of fun. Grew up with all of them. A lot of them still are not around no more. It was great growing up before the internet, huh? We had the one guy, oh yeah. We had one guy named Slim, Willie Rodriguez. William was a Latino in his neighborhood. They got along with every Italian, from the merchant to the people, the old people. He was such a helpful, caring young guy. Willie died too young. Slim, we called him Slim. And he ran that club. He made sure the dues were paid. He lived in there, and he he passed away in his sleep, and I, I took that bad because he was one of my one of my best, you know. There's Catania's. You want to get a slice? Yeah, let's check this out. Let me let me throw that away. Don't put that on camera because my doctor don't want don't want to see that. Oh, the cigarette. What am I gonna do? You were you were smoking, Richard. Well, my doctor won't see it. Yeah, he won't see it. Fuck. What's going on here? Catania's Pizza. with him and his brother. How do you do? I didn't see you. My 
my vision you, my vision has gotten worse. You've got older and I got older. Your vision's got worse. I'll do a slice of cheese pizza. Oh, your vision's got worse. A lot. <laughs> now I still write and do my thing though. I don't get over here as much as I'd like you to. You used to get here a lot more often. Yeah, but now I'm busy. Rich, how do you guys I'm feel with Rich tomorrow. leaving the neighborhood? You miss him? You miss him? Yeah, miss we him? do miss him. We miss his uh, sarcasm. And all They're that. Yankee fans. Yankee fans. So. They're calzones. You can't beat them. Can't beat the calzones. Are you guys and brothers? Yes. All right. Rich has got a great sense of humor. He does. Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking they, it. They don't make no more. What about you? Not me. I ain't funny at all. <laughs> I only look funny. <laughs> so, guys, tell me, you're you're Italian American? Uh, Italian. Yes. Italian American. You were Italian, born, born, born in Italy, yes. Italian. Born in Italy, where? Yes. Calabria. Good pizza. Thank you. Straightforward New York, New York pizza. Cri a little crisp at yeah. the bottom. Good amount of cheese. Oh, who's the baby? Nikki. Very nice. This is the mini calzone that you could only get at Catania's. When we were growing up, you know, 10, 12, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. After school, you dropped your books home, you did a little homework that you got, and you went out and you played. Five, five thirty, there was a bunch of whistles going off. And every kid knew which whistle was this. That meant dinner time. Every every parent had a different whistle. Every, for their kids everyone had a different whistle from the window. Uh, and at five between five and five thirty p.m., every kid was at the dinner table. Dinner, dinner, table. dinner seven nights a week. Every seven, night. Seven, no, some days, Sunday some days it was like one o'clock. Three o'clock, one o'clock. We, we ate at three. Right. So, and that's what's missing. That's what's That's missing in society. Man. That's what's missing. Gone. Because if you didn't get home at 5.30, you didn't eat. You didn't eat. You didn't eat. You, didn't you had eat. to wait till tomorrow. You had a different menu every night. You had to wait till tomorrow. Right? And that's what's missing. Different There's menu. no more discipline at home. Remember my mother. We got kicked in the ass plenty of times. Yeah. But we stayed together. And it's missing. Right. So where do you think things are going right now? There's no discipline. These kids are doing whatever they want to do. Told you. To be fair, old, older people always said that, though. Every every parent's always said that, right? Absolutely. But you think this time's different? You got in trouble in the street growing up here. Yeah. And somebody yelled at you, or like another parent. You did not go home and tell your parents that you got yelled at by another parent. Mm. Because if you did, you were wrong. They yelled at you for a reason. They didn't yell at you for nothing. So, so parents, everyone's parents were looking out for other kids Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yeah. That was called um, community, neighborhood, which you don't have anymore. There's no more communities. There's no more neighborhoods. There's nothing. Done. That's depressing, guys. Because now they want uh, the, the cops to be the community. Back in the day, it was somebody else's parent that told you, hey, what are you still doing here? It's 5.30. Don't you think you should be home eating? Right, if they were out or coming home from work or whatever. There was no homeless. There were no you homeless. You were homeless, you didn't belong in that farm. We had the neighborhood bum, you know? Absolutely, but he didn't Miguel sleep. Miguel was still around. But he didn't sleep on the bench. No, and then we had uh, Ozark. <laughs> <laughs> Ozark. <laughs> you remember Pasquale? Yeah, Pasquale, yeah. <laughs> remember Pasquale. My first time in this neighborhood, it looks pretty good. It was a lot better. It was, it was so much better. So much better. If you think this is good, there was a lot of kids, a lot of young just kids. kids running around the streets and whatnot. There was there was leagues in the in, in the neighborhood. Yeah. Like for instance, the softball league. Yeah. There was six, seven teams. Each always. kid, each kid was from the neighborhood. That's you a lot of kids. Them. Always playing ball. That's a lot of kids. Yeah. Basketball league. Remember the basketball league? Each block had their own team. Okay? Yes. Everything. Now you can't get five kids to and play a game of basketball, baseball, whatever. And you, you competed get. against Everybody's the home on their computer, on their phone, and that's the difference. We don't give up. We fight for our values. We believe in our culture, and we're a we're united yeah. people. We might we not are. have money, but we have everything. Yeah, you got great thing, food. You've heard, yeah, the, you've heard the expression about Italian, la familia. This is it. It's family. 
Like these guys are not friends. They've been like family for years. I don't see them every day. He's already, he said I walked in here. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could see him every day. But that's part of that growing up La Valia. That's it. You what? deliver this? Yeah, I'm going to deliver it right now. Where are you going? I'm going to Adam's place. You're just going to walk it there? That's it. No Uber Eats? Nope. <laughs> Take care. You're seeing it for the first time. I'm going back to the past. Let's go right? to the old yeah. block. Yoki's always been my favorite because my mother used to make this homemade. This is where the mob a lot of guys were here. If they needed a favor from me, they got it. But I didn't want nothing back in return from them. Except their love. That's it. He was in charge of the neighborhood. Frankie. Frankie Smart. He passed. Back then, you didn't settle things with guns and knives. Those are the moves. Those are the moves. Yes, cannoli will always be a cannoli. Now it's um, not Albanian. Don't screw with them either. Dude. No, no. Oh, uh, I know that. <laughs> I get emotional. Sneaking away from mom and dad. Hey, sweetheart. Yeah, but they used to watch from the window. <laughs> Here, mafia used to control this whole area. Who controls the block now? We do. This is your mother or father? Both. You cannot erase great memories.